This SaaS is making over $750,000 per month and I copied their entire software without writing a single line of code. WAP has become one of the hottest platforms in the industry and I was able to recreate their entire business model using just one AI tool. The craziest part, AI did everything for me. The user interface, payment processing with Stripe to receive payments right away, all the core features without any coding knowledge whatsoever. What would normally take a team of developers months and costs hundreds of thousands of dollars I accomplished in a fraction of the time in this video I'm gonna walk you through the exact step-by-step -step process I used to build this WAP clone I'll show you which AI tool made this possible how I set up each feature and how you could do the same for any SaaS business you want to create by the end of this video you'll have a blueprint for building your own no-code SaaS business that could generate serious revenue we're starting this build by generating the full document using code guide the goal is to create a no code SaaS app inspired by WAP, a platform that helps people discover digital products connect with communities and build online businesses everything should be built using replit and the app needs to work across both desktop and mobile with a clean modern interface to kick things off we will provide a detailed prompt that outlines the core features a marketplace for digital products and communities searchable and filterable listings leaderboards for trending content, a smooth checkout process powered by Stripe, user accounts with reviews and saved listings, creator dashboards with analytics, an affiliate system, and admin tools for moderation. Now that we are done, CodeGuide is asking a series of questions to refine the direction. Let's tell CodeGuide that the app will be aimed at digital creators, entrepreneurs, and community builders, mostly tech-savvy users between 18 and 35. We don't have branding yet, but I want a fresh tech-forward design with both light and dark modes using modern fonts and a vibrant accent color. On the payment side, we're sticking with Stripe but adding support for discount codes, taxes and fiat fields for Europe users. I also want creators to run their own affiliate programs complete with custom commission settings, referral tracking and a dashboard for affiliates to see how they're performing. User accounts will support messaging between buyers and creators and send platform notifications for purchases, updates or affiliate activity. Creators will have access to detailed sales analytics, things like revenue, top sellers, conversion rates, and refunds with visual graphs to track it all. Search and filtering will focus on categories, pricing models, popularity, and new arrival. No location filters needed, though we're open to personalized recommendations later. As for integrations, we're keeping everything inside Replit. No third-party tools or outside system. Finally, we're including a basic admin panel to manage listings, user activity, and featured content. Once all the answers are submitted, CodeGuide generates the documents that will guide the rest of the build. With the documentation out of the way, it's time to start building the actual app inside Replit. This is where we go from idea to something tangible. Let's begin with a setup prompt that tells the agent we're creating a SaaS web app inspired by WAP. The goal is a marketplace where digital creators can sell products, offer services, and run community memberships. Before before any coding happens, we will attach the PRD, our product requirements document, so the agent can go through it and give a breakdown of what the project's all about. Now, the agent gets to work building the initial prototype. It's asking us which extra features we want included. So we are going to select PostgreSQL integration for the database, along with an enhanced messaging system that lets users and creators communicate directly through the platform. What we have here is a clean and functional starting point. The layout reflects the structure we outlined in the PRD and it already feels like a solid foundation to build on. But right away, I can see here something that needs fixing. The navigation buttons at the top, marketplace, features for creators and pricing. They're not aligned properly, so we will fix that. And while we're doing that, we are going to ask for a seamless animated transition when each button is clicked. Small detail, but it makes the UI feel smoother and more refined. Next, the agent asks for our Stripe API. API keys, both public and private. If you're setting this up yourself, all you need to do is log into Stripe, search for API keys in the dashboard, and you'll find both keys listed. With that done, we can now move forward and add the database. Then we will populate the app with more listings, digital products, services, and communities. These cover every possible filter up, all categories, pricing models, content types, and discovery filters, like newest, most popular, and highest rated. It gives us a chance to test how well the 
filtering system performs once the app starts filling up with real content. Everything's running smoothly on the marketplace side, but there's one hiccup. Whenever we click on a community listing, we are landing on a 404 error. Page it's supposed to load doesn't exist yet. Once that's taken care of, community listing pages will load without any issues. Looking through the interface, a few buttons still aren't connected. The become us creator button, for example, doesn't lead anywhere yet. So we will ask the agent to create a dedicated page that appears when that button is clicked. Once that's in place, we are now going to start tightening up the structure. To stay aligned with our original vision, let's revisit the app's flowchart, which outlines the different user types. Standard users, creators, and admins. Standard users should be able to make purchases, view their purchase history, and access their account set. Creators, on the other hand, need access to a full featured dashboard. Inside that dashboard, they should be able to manage listings, view analytics, access an affiliate system, set commission rates, and generate referral links. The affiliate dashboard also needs to track clicks and conversions in real time. Admins are responsible for managing listings, resolving disputes, and monitoring user activity across the platform. We also want to include a messaging system so users and creators can actually talk to each other. Whether it's about a product, a community, or just basic support, having that communication built in makes the whole experience more complete. The structure for this is already mapped out in the flowchart, which we've included in both Markdown and JPEG format. Now, some of the recent changes aren't showing up in the UI yet. For example, whenever we are trying to become a creator by filling out the form, we're redirected to a generic dashboard page that looks more like a profile or like account setting screen. That's not what we want here. The creator dashboard should load instead. So we will fix that. And while we're at it, we will also go back over the core features to make sure they're all present. Creators should be able to manage listings, view performance data, access the affiliate tools, and customize their storefront. Standard users, meanwhile, should be able to make purchases, track their order history, and manage their personal accounts. At this stage, we can start checking each tab and page to make sure everything is working properly. We will also add a new functionality that lets users view other accounts and browse profiles across the platform. Then we are going to create a new creator account and begin adjusting the dashboard layout to improve the overall user experience. Account management should have its own dedicated page and the dashboard button in the top navigation bar that should only appear once someone applies to become a creator. If the user hasn't applied, that button stays hidden. But once they're accepted, the dashboard becomes accessible. The creator dashboard should include tools to add, edit or remove listings view revenue and analytics, respond to messages, and customize the store page with branding elements. And once someone becomes a creator, their profile should go public. It should display their name, bio, listings, and reviews fully visible to anyone on the platform. Meanwhile, users who aren't creators should still be able to track their purchases, save their favorite listings, leave reviews, and follow creators they like. By now, all of these features are showing up inside the dashboard. We are also going to set up a live creator account to see it all in action. At this point, users can explore the creator section, click into any profile, and see that creator's listings, reviews, and community offerings. There's a dedicated page for browsing through all active creators, and if someone already has a product listed in the marketplace, their profile becomes fully clickable and accessible. Next, we will check in on the For Creators page. It's still empty, along with a few of the other pages linked in the top navbar. So we will start defining what should go in those pages and begin applying the missing content. Now that everything is laid out, let's ask the agent to push the changes directly to the interface and ensure every UI component is functioning properly. Everything loads without issue. The content is there and now the app responds the way it should. We will wrap up this stage by updating the features and pricing pages to make sure every link in the header leads to a page with meaningful content. We will now move into the testing phase to clean up all remaining errors and polish the user experience. This part can feel tedious, but it's where all the invisible details start to matter. It's the difference between an app that technically works and one that feels smooth, reliable, and actually usable. We will start by testing the core transaction flow. Whenever we try to make a purchase or subscribe to a listing from the marketplace, an error appears. Clicking this buy
buy now button returns an error page that says did you forget to add the page to the router this button should be directing us to the billing page this is where stripe integration is supposed to come in it is also noticeable that some listings are free and the button clearly says get for free those listings should not send the user to the payment page at all instead they should immediately show up under the purchases tab inside the user's profile we apply these conditions to the app after implementing the changes we are going to try again the checkout page now loads correctly when we click buy now or subscribe which confirms the stripe integration is in place but when we click get for free the app still redirects us to the billing page which it shouldn't free listings need to skip billing entirely and just be added to the purchases tab another issue shows up in the message box this points to a foreign key constraint error when a user tries to get a product we need to fix the error and reapply the purchase logic for both paid and free listings once that's done we'll test again clicking a free listing now works properly it skips payment and goes straight into the user's purchases tab clicking on the paid listing takes us to the stripe billing page as expected next we will look at creator profiles from marketplace listings when a user clicks on the creator's name inside the listing they should be taken to that creator's full profile page just like the behavior we already have on the creator's page we also want users to be able to leave reviews and favorite listings these should show up under the reviews and favorites tabs in the user's my account page let's apply these changes now i will go to my account and check if they're reflected properly after adding a listing to favorites and submitting a review both show up in the correct tab so far everything is working let's return to that same listing and here the review we submitted is no longer visible let's go back to my account again and now it's gone from there as well we need to fix this one review should stay visible when viewing the listing when browsing the reviews tab on the creator's profile and inside the user's own account under reviews let's test again after applying the update the changes aren't fully correct yet but we're getting closer the review logic is working in some places just not consistently we need to keep going and make our prompts more specific to help the agent solve these issues more precisely let's go through another round of testing this time reviews appear as expected when we submit a review for a product listed by a creator it now shows up inside the reviews tab on that creator's profile this confirms that it's displaying properly now when a user visits a creator's profile they should be able to follow the creator view their product listings under the products tab browse their communities under the communities tab and read feedback under the reviews tab now that we are working on it i think that the user also needs a dedicated page that shows all of the creators they follow this will help with organization and navigation we will prompt the agent to implement that feature right now we're still logged in as a standard user and when we try clicking follow creator the button doesn't work we need to fix that once it's working users should be able to follow creators and view them on the new following page we can also notice the message button doesn't load properly we will also ask the agent to fix the message page and add simple chat features users and creators should be able to send messages include emojis and see visual chat bubbles each time they send or receive a message now we apply the changes following creators is now working and the dedicated page for followed creators is live we also have to test the messaging features the message button now opens the chat window messages display correctly with chat bubbles and emoji selection work right now users and creators can chat with each other through the app we'll confirm that creators are also able to message standard users and even other creators now the messaging flow works across all user types next let's log into a creator account and try to add a new product a message box confirms the product has been added but there's no visual feedback in the dashboard we need the product to show up in the recent product section and under my products in the creator dashboard that way it's clear that the content has actually been added to the app let's apply the fix then we test again using the creator account exploring every section of the dashboard product management affiliate features messaging analytics and all content tabs overall i can confidently say that all the core functionalities inside the creator dashboard are working smoothly and that's it we've built a fully functional SaaS platform from the ground up no code no shortcuts just a clear roadmap and the right tools what started as a simple prompt turned into a production ready app that's clean responsive and ready to scale thanks for following along and i'll see you in the next one